Hi, good morning, everyone. So, beta, this is day two of our session that we are conducting every day. Every day, I am going to go ahead and meet you at 10.30 10 a.m. And we are going to go ahead and discuss our preparation for three kind of exams. That is going to be DEPR. It is going to be Indian Economic Service and it is going to be IAS Economics Optional. Right? We are going to take some topics every day and we are going to combine uh, important questions and past year questions of these three papers. And we are going to go ahead and prepare ourselves for these three papers. Right, Vita? Okay. So the topic that I am going to go ahead and take for today, that topic is actually statistics plus econometrics. Right? Right, Vita? Let's take the first question. So this question actually, it came in uh, Depper Phase 1 2022 paper. And let us try to see what this question is saying. It says the mean and median of 100 observation is given to you. And it is given to you as 50 and 52 respectively. The value of the largest item is given to you as 100. And later it was found out that this value was not 100. Rather, this value was actually 110. So it was found out that this value is 110, right? And it was misread at 100. So it is saying find out the corrected mean and find out the corrected median. Okay, let's look into this question. So try to see that this is a very simple question, of course. So try to see that when I talk about the mean, the mean can be represented by a summation xi by n. It is sum of all observation divided by the number of observations. And I am told in this question that the mean is given to me as 50. So if I were to go ahead and add all observations together, that means x1 plus x2 and so on, till xn, there are 100 observations, divide it by the number of observations, I will observe that the mean will come out to be 50. So the mean is 50, right? Now what I can go ahead and I can do is I can just find the total sum so if I were to go ahead and I were to find the sum, the sum will come as 50 into 100. That means the sum will be 5,000. The sum is going to be 5,000. So we realize that the sum of observation is actually giving us 5,000. Now there was this one observation which I had gone ahead and I had written as 100. But actually this observation is 110. So in this sum, in this sum, when I was summing all the observations together, I was summing all the observations together. There was this observation 100 and the total sum was 5000. But this observation should have been 110, right? So what can we do? How can we find the new sum? Very simple. The new sum will be old sum. I will remove this wrong observation and I will write the correct observation. So it is going to be 5000 minus 100 plus 110. So 5010. This is going to be my new sum that I will be having. So my new sum that I will be having in this case, this is going to become 5010. Right? Okay. Now let us go ahead and let us try to understand what is going to be the new mean that we will be having. So new sum divided by the number of observation and this is going to give me the new mean which will be 50.1. Right. Let us now talk about the median. So when I talk about the median, the median, to find the median, what do you do? You put the observations in the arranging order. Right. So you put these observations like this. There are 100 observations. I have plugged them in the arranging order. And since there are 100 observations, we know that the median would have been based on the mid values. It is always based on the mid observations. So when there are odd number of observations, median is n plus 
um, you know, one by two with observation. So if there would have been 101 observations, so it would have been 101 plus one, which means 102 by two, 51st observation would have been the mean. And if there would have been uh, even observation, then n by 2 plus n by 2 plus 1 at observation divided by 2. That would have been your median, right? So median is based on these mid observations. Now, if you notice, this is saying that it is the highest observation that has been actually the largest observation that has actually been changed, right? The largest item. So the last item, the last observation that you had what is that called yeah so this last observation that you had this is actually instead of 100 it is 110 but median has got nothing to do with first and last observations it's only based on the mid values right so therefore median will remain unchanged so the correct answer to this question will be that the mean will become 50.1 and the median will remain unchanged at 52. So the correct answer to this question will be C. Right? Okay, beta. come to the next question. So now we will be going ahead and taking an econometrics question. So this came in Indian Economic Service in the year 2014. Let us try to read this question. You're given that the demand for good X is estimated to be this. So this is the equation that you are given to estimate the demand of good X. And uh, you're also given that P, M and P, R refers to be price, income and price of related goods. So P is price, M is income and P, R is the price of the related goods. Right. And you're also given these values. So you are given that, you know, price is 200, income is 60,000 and price of related goods is 100. Now, it says, first of all, calculate the price elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand, and cross price elasticity of demand, right? So, when we talk about the price elasticity of demand, so uh, the price elasticity of demand can be written as how quantity changes as price changes into initial price by initial quantity, right? So if I were to just go back to the equation that I have, I have been given and I were to find dq by dp, this will give me minus 500. And if I just want to find out the elasticity of demand, it will be dq by dp into p by q. So this is going to be minus 500 into initial price. Initial price is 200 and by initial quantity. Now, I need to find out what my quantity is. So, what I can go ahead and I can do is, I am already given the value of P, M and P, R. And I can always go ahead and plug those values. So, Q is going to be 250000 minus 500. And P, price will be 200. So, instead of P, I will plug in 200. Minus 1.5 and income will be 60,000. So into 60,000 minus 240 and PR is going to be So this is going to go ahead and give me 250000 minus, so this is going to be 10, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus. So this is going to be 9, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 2, 4, 0, 0, 0. Right. So, okay. So, this is going to go ahead and give me 2,50,000 minus 1 lakh, 1 lakh 50,000 minus 90 which is going to go ahead and give me 60,000 minus 24,000, which is going to give me 36,000. So answer will be 36,000. Right? Please recheck this. Huh, beta? I am just doing it, but you need to recheck this. Okay. So that is it. So answer will be 36,000 here. So instead of quantity, I will go ahead and I will plug 
36,000. Right? And then you can just go ahead and divide this and find the answer. Okay, so if I were to go ahead and do 500 into 200, this is going to give me 1 lakh. And if I divide this by 36,000, then this is approximately 36. 3 the is more than this. So 2 are 72. This is approximately going to give me minus 2.78. Right? So that's the answer to this question. Now it goes ahead and asks you, Find the income elasticity of demand. So now what we need to go ahead and do in this question, we need to find out what will be income elasticity. So look into this slope. This is minus 1.5. So if I ask how quantity changes as income changes, this will be minus 1.5. And again, if you ask me what is going to be the income elasticity, so I will ask how quantity changes as income changes into initial income by initial quantity. So minus 1.5 into income. Income is going to be 60,000 by initial quantity and initial quantity is going to be 36,000. Right, so this is going to be minus 90,000 divided by 36,000, right? So if I were to go ahead and I were to divide 90,000 divided by 36,000, this is going to give me 2.5. So answer would be minus 2.5. Okay, the next thing that it is asking you to go ahead and do is to find out the uh, cross price elasticity. So cross price elasticity can be said as how quantity changes as price of related good changes into initial relative good price by initial quantity. So if I were to go ahead and differentiate this with respect to PR, I will get minus 240. So I'm going to have minus 240 here. And PR is going to be 100. So I will put 100 here. And quantity we know is 36,000. Okay, so this is going to be minus 24,000 divided by 36,000. So 12 twos are and 12 threes are. So 0 0.67 is going to be your answer. Peter, you must be very quick with your calculations, right? A lot of times, even if calculator is allowed, not allowed, your mind should process things faster, right? So this is going to be minus 0 0.67. Okay, so that's the answer to this first question. Up next, Peppo, it says, is the demand for good X elastic, inelastic or unit elastic? So we can clearly see that the elasticity is coming more than one. So we can go ahead and say that, so here we can go ahead and say that since the demand elasticity is less than minus 1, therefore it is elastic. Ab absolute may be lik sakte the. You could have written that elasticity of demand in absolute terms is more than 1, therefore elastic. Okay, now it says, how does small increase in price affect total revenue? So you need to understand that. So try to understand this thing. Huh? It's very simple to understand. Now, ideally, we know the total expenditure rule. We know that in case of elastic demand, price and PR, they move in opposite direction. Right? They move in opposite direction. So when price would increase, the total revenue or total expenditure would decrease. We know this. They will move in opposite direction. So when there is going to be increase in price, total revenue will fall. But what you can also go ahead and you can do is you can try to prove this thing. So if I just talk about the total revenue, total revenue will be price into quantity. And I'm asking how total revenue changes as price changes. How total revenue changes as price changes. Actually, you can go ahead and you can just put uh, this also if you. So this is going to be a differentiation of first function into second as it is plus differentiation of the second function into first as it is. Right. So this is going to be Q plus del Q by del P into P. And what you can go ahead and do is you can just take Q common. And it will give you 1 plus del Q by del P into P by Q. Right? So if you just go ahead and you notice, this is going to be Q 1 plus elasticity of demand. 
Now there are three cases that can be taken. So if elasticity of demand is exactly minus one, right? If elasticity of demand is exactly minus one, in that case, you see that here I will get minus one. So one minus one will be zero. So you can see that I am going to go ahead and get that del T R by del P. This is going to be zero. If elasticity of demand is less than minus one, maybe I put minus two here. I put minus two here, right? So one minus two will be minus one. So you will notice that del T R by del P will be negative. That means when price will increase, total revenue will decrease and vice versa, right? So if it is elastic, this is elastic, then they will move in opposite direction. This is unit elastic. This will not change. And you can notice that when elasticity is greater than minus one, so you can go ahead and put 0 0.5 here, minus 0 0.5. Your entire answer will be positive. So you can notice that del TR by del P will be positive. They will move in the same direction. Right, so that's the answer to this question. Okay, now it says, um, is the good X normal or inferior good? So if I just go back and I check here, so I will notice that the elastic income elasticity is coming as negative. So we can say that in this case, we can say that since elasticity of income is negative, therefore inferior. And then it says, are X and Y substitute or complement goods? And for that, again, you can just look into the sign. So you're noticing that there is a negative sign. That means when price of one good is increasing, the demand of other good is decreasing. So it's like when price of ink increases, the demand for a pen also falls. So since Cross price elasticity is also giving you negative answer. Therefore, it was negative only, right? All have negative sign. Yes. So it is giving you negative answer. Therefore, complementary goods. Right? Therefore, complement good. So when price of, say, uh, left pair shoe increases, the demand for right pair shoe will also decrease, right? So they will move in opposite direction. So these are complementary goods. So, so we can say that it is an inferior good. It is an elastic demand good. And it is a complement good with the other commodity, that whatever commodity we are talking about. That is the end of this question. Okay, beta. Thank you.